DNA is all about being simple, being stylish, and being meaningful. And we want to continuously become meaningful to our consumers. And it's through situations like this, opportunities like this, that we hope to again have the occasion to speak to you, listen to you, to exchange ideas with you, and also have this platform for you to exchange ideas among yourself. And um, we want to again learn from you, be inspired by you, and I think tonight promises a night at which you will feel inspirations. Now I'm going to introduce the second speaker. Uh, it's Dr. Lim Kuo Yi. He is the founding partner of Monks U Ventures, uh, who is uh, right now holding about a uh, 18 million US, if I'm not wrong, a fun better field to look out for new businesses and new ideas out there. Uh, he's also the ex CEO of Infocom Investment, so he'll be here today uh, in a little bit more different format, uh, of which. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll have a little bit of discussion between myself and him to sort of tease him out of, uh, of his experience being a venture capitalist, what he looks for in startups which uh, is worth his attention. So with that, I will invite uh, Koi to join us. Yep. Hi, I'm Koi and a VC at Monks Hill Ventures. I'll be sharing with you what it's like being a VC at the first Frankly Speaking talk by Frank by OCBC. Um, so, as, you know, just to back up a little bit, as a venture capital investor, we obviously look for companies and people to invest in and work with. Uh, and exactly to Michael's point, we spend a lot of time building relationships. Uh, the venture capital business, when we invest in a company, is really about the people that is behind the business. So we spend a lot of time just uh, working with people, knowing people, having a lot of coffee. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's an occupational hazard to be drinking a lot of coffee every day. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the flip side of that is because a typical reason why a startup company fails in the first six to 12 months is because of the people, right? Uh, it's a lonely business to be a founder. And so a lot of people out there, even if you have two or three guys working with you as a startup company, when tired meets the road, you know, you start a company, you run a business, you realize that, wow, it's not that sexy or romantic. And that's when you start having uh, issues and tensions and pressures. Uh, so we spend a lot of time understanding the people before we decide to invest and back the people. Uh, that's what we do as a VC. So a typical day will involve a lot of uh, internal conversations about teams we've met, um, spending a lot of time going out there and meeting companies uh, for the first time, for the tenth time, before we decide we want to work with them in the long term. Great, cool, cool. Because um, I always wonder what uh, VCs do. I would play games because you know we gotta learn how to play the games and invest in the company. No, just that's that's the perk that comes with it. Right? Comes with the perk, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, play games. And, and we also notice that right now in the whole startup industry, um, and in some ways, from what we understand from the Monks Hill Ventures, your own yep. uh, fund, a lot of investments and acquisitions are mainly in the infotech area, the technology area. Uh, I, I understand there are huge interests in Monty Ventures, in e-commerce, enterprise, SAAS, big data stuff. Right. What do you think would be other sectors that, that VCs like yourself would be interested in? What other sectors? Yes. Um, so the way we think about this is typically looking at um, uh, areas of opportunities, right? Uh, how big a problem is, to Mike's point, you know, what is the, 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 the size of the problem and how badly it's, do people need a solution to that problem, right? In, in, the, in the venture capital world, we, all, we call it, you know, is it a solution that is a, uh, a painkiller or a vitamin pill? What's the difference? A vitamin pill, if I don't take it today, I wouldn't die from it. If I don't take the painkiller, I would really hurt from it for a long time. So we, we would look at places where there's an opportunity and that there's a need, in, in, in need of a painkiller. Um, in Southeast Asia, that's what we are focused on. We realize a lot of the problems are very regional and very local and emerging market. Take, for example, e-commerce uh, delivery, right? Uh, you live in Singapore. Your address is block one something something, you know, Amokyo Street 13, unit 05-11. It's easy. If you deliver a package in Jakarta, the address is 
house on this Jalan something something next to the tree, right? <laughs> on top of the store that sells uh, that sells uh, satay or something like that. So that is the challenge in emerging markets. You have issues that you take for granted in a country, country like Singapore that needs to be solved. So we look for guys who are solving mark problems that are immediate, that has a lot of impact, and that could create a, a huge uh, value in terms of obviously revenue, money, and, and all of that. Right. In right, general. Right. Um, and that, that brings to a, 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 a related question. Mm. Uh, in your database, I've read that there are over a thousand startups in your database. A few thousand. A few thousand now, yeah. right? Great. And it's, I can't imagine how you would be able to sieve out the ones that would have value, as right. what you just right. mentioned. Right. How, how, do you, how do you do that with a scan of a few thousand startups in your database? It's tough. I, I think uh, we, you know, it's, it's a difficult problem. Uh, one of the uh, dirty little secret about the venture capital business is that we don't scale very well, right? You have 24 hours a day. You know, you have family, you have lives, you have things you want to do, and then you're reading business plans every day. So on the average, we see about 10 to 20 business plans a week. So you imagine, you know, multiply that by about 50 weeks. That's about a thousand a year. Um, it's tough, and I would say we, we are still struggling with it. We try to find patterns, we try to find frameworks, criteria that very quickly filter things out and zoom into the ones that we think are going to be interesting. And obviously we get it wrong a lot of the times, but we try to get it right as much as we can. But coming back to it, I think ultimately the way we really get engaged and understand the business is after multiple meetings with the same team. Um, in my investment so far, I would have known the business owner, the founders, for at least about six to nine months before I invest. So the first coffee is telling me about the idea before as a business. Interesting, let's catch up again about a month from now. Hopefully you have built something and we can talk about it. That happens about two months later. Six months later, he has built something, he has launched something, he has the first 10 customers. Interesting, how was it like? And then you talk about that for another six months and then you learn from that and then before you know it, you, know, you, you began to a, understand the passion for the business, and B, getting comfort that the person is, is really into the business. Uh, and that's when you begin to get a sense that this is the right one to back. It's tough. I, I don't have a good answer. You know, I think everyone is trying to figure out a good way to do it, but it's, it's one of the ongoing challenges for, for VCs. For sure. that, that explains the number of, the amount of coffee that we've been drinking. And the number of hours that we stay awake and not sleep. So. Right. So that, that brings me to personal interest. Is there a cafe in your office? And now I want to start one cafe. And it's quite good no, business. I have a, my, 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 my personal assistant has a list of all the cafes that I like to go to. So all right. Okay, I must keep telling all around, the, all around the country. I must check different you. cities. Philippines, uh, Jakarta, and other <laughs> cafes there. So. Good. Um, I think recently in Singapore, we've seen a few high-profile funding that was being done. Uh, right. I think uh, most... Recently, uh, Grab Taxi grabbed a lot of attention. I think some of you would have used it. I personally have used Grab Taxi as well. Do you think that's repeatable in in a market like Singapore? And obviously, Grab Taxi's eye the market a lot wider. Do you think that's a repeatable success of a startup that that starts from this part of the world? I think so. I think so. I mean, look at Southeast Asia. Um, any guess on the population for Southeast Asia? A billion? Anybody? A billion? 200 million? The size is about 600 million. Uh, if you think about the people who are in the middle class able to spend a couple of thousand dollars for a, a tour experience, going somewhere and spending and traveling there, it's about 60 million people. To give you perspective, the population of the United Kingdom is 60 million. Yeah, so it's pretty sizable. You imagine that you have, can build a business that the entire UK is willing to use it and spend money on it. It is a multi-million and even possibly a billion dollar business. So is Grab Taxi a fluke? I would say no. Right, because the market is right, the people are spending, the people are using it. How many of you use Grab Taxi? Oh, that few. How many of you find it useful? How many of you find it not useful? So, so there you go. I think, I think this, and how many of it, it, it Grab Taxi is probably one of the best exp uh, example of how much it costs to build a product, right? Not a whole lot. But it's the right time, the right place, and all that. So it's absolutely uh, possible to do that in, in Southeast Asia, in Singapore, in Malaysia, etc. 
again, I think personally, if I'm uh, 20 years younger, I will be streaming my neck to ask this question. So as a young entrepreneur, I think some of them may be uh, with us today. How do they position themselves, poise themselves to attract your attention? <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, I reach out. I think the simple way is to uh, network, go to meeting sessions like this, get connected. I'm not the only VC in town. There are many VCs around. Um, but let me step back and say one thing. Um, getting funding from a VC is not a mark of success. Repeat, if you get money from a VC, it does not equal success. There are many ways to fund and grow your business. Uh, if you have a business idea and, and a VC says it's not the right one for me, it doesn't mean you have failed. It just means you're not the right investment type for the VC. So, so you know, that shouldn't be your goal. Uh, find the best way to articulate your business. Why is it interesting? Why do you think it would become big? Why do you think it would become big in the near term as opposed to 10 years from now? And you'll get a VC's attention. Mm, I think another burning question for any young entrepreneurs is uh, perhaps from your own experience as well. What's a good business pitch? And what, what, what's the best business pitch that you've ever come across? Um, I think, you know, so as I mentioned, I think the, the, the best business pitch really is very succinct. It, it talks very specifically about the size of the opportunity. Why is this big? Uh, why are the reasons as to why we big fast? Like main reason, the drivers. And then why is this person in the team the best team to address it? Now, I said two things. Market opportunity and the team to do it. I said nothing about the product or the technology at some level. Why? Things will change. We believe that if you bet good people going after a big opportunity, they will be successful. They'll figure out the right product for it, the right technology to cobble together to innovate uh, if they have a base for it and then, and then to address that opportunity. So the best pitch usually for me is opportunity and why am I the right person to do it. And you mentioned succinct. So the what we've seen on TV before, elevator pitch, yeah. do it within 10 floors when the elevator goes up and down. Is that, is that absolutely true? No. <laughs> 20. <laughs> no, 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 I think, I think, I think the, the idea is to really be clear and direct. Right. right. If you need to talk, say a lot in, you know, in circles and with five PowerPoints before you make the point, I think you lost the plot. It's, it's probably the deal. And it also reflects on your understanding of the problem to be able to boil it down to a very simple sentence. Right. So if you have not thought enough about it, you probably are not able to articulate it very well. And so it's a reflection of that. Right. So was my cafe idea good enough? In Absolutely. In one sentence. <laughs> Okay, um, we also picked up that about two years ago in an interview with E27 in Thailand when you were doing your travels there, uh, you made a very interesting statement and let me just quote and unquote you. You said uh, the advice to um, young startup is keep hustling. Uh, you have to keep the pressure on yourself to move faster. You want to elaborate a bit further on that? Um, I think it's really a, a capturing a few elements of what it's like to be a startup founder. I mentioned one, it, you know, it's, it's relatively lonely. Uh, how many of you have been a founder or started a business yourself? Michael, right? Uh, a couple of guys in the back. How many of you plan to start a business? Yourself? With a friend? And all that? I yeah. shouldn't be raising my hand, right? The, <laughs> you know, go, 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 see, see. Side business, side business. So, uh, great. Yeah. Um, it is, it is a rapid learning because you're thinking about a lot of problems, you're thinking about it all the time. Hopefully, you have a couple of co founders and good friends who are in there with you. So you spend a lot of time trying to share you know, the stress and all of that. It is, it is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, lonely business. So it's debilitating. It takes a lot of energy. Right? So it requires you to have almost this dynamo in, internally to keep yourself going because every day is a full day. And it's a 24-7 thing. And so you have to be able to keep your energy up and keep yourself going. And you have to be a self-encourager. Uh, and find, dig deep internally to find the willpower to do it. Um, it's easy to say, but you, know, you need to be able to do that. Hustling. Hustling because if your business is worth doing, guess what? There'd be a few other people doing it at the same time. So you gotta just keep running. Because anytime you stop, someone is gonna be right next to you and ahead of you, right? So, so it is a, it sounds pressure-filled, but 
once you are doing a business that you really, really feel strongly about, really, really love, trust me, you wake up every morning and jump out of bed at 6 in the, in the morning and say, I'm ready to fight another day. It's a fantastic feeling and you should try it all. Thanks. Um, evidence for startups in some ways to present themselves, right? Um, yeah. I think there are some well-known platforms, as, as you mentioned, sessions like this as well are, are where opportunities for startups to, to network, to meet people. What, what other avenues would you recommend to you know, the, 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 our friends on the floor uh, who perhaps have some idea already and, and they want to present themselves? So I, I'm, I'm more focused on the IT world, so that uh, kind of has its own sort of uh, set of things to do versus a biotech where you're building a new car, then it's different. But in the IT world, there are these things called the hackathons. Right, these are things you spend 24, 48 hours in a room with a bunch of people who are building a product and try to build it in 48 hours, 72 hours. You have business people with the ideas, you have technical guys who can build things to, to solve the problem. Over the three days, the place begins to smell pretty bad and guys don't sleep and they don't shower, they don't brush their teeth. But these are great places to really find your team and get engaged with both investors as well as potential teammates. Um, a lot of sessions, I think, I think one thing that's great about Singapore right now is there are a lot of meetup sessions, uh, both technical as well as business driven, on the, almost on a monthly basis. So there's never a shortage of chance to run into people, share ideas. Uh, so one thing I should say here, um, what is a bad pitch? A bad pitch is when someone's come to me and say, look, Goy, I want to share an idea with you. But I cannot tell you right now because if I tell you, I'm afraid everybody else would know and copy me. An idea needs to see, the sunlight is the best uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, disinfectant for bad ideas. You need to bring it out there, talk to a lot of people, strengthen it, get feedback on it, stress test it, really get confident in being able to talk about it. Right? And to keep it in yourself and say, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna build something, I'm afraid people will copy me, it's just absolutely the wrong way to do it. And, you know, ideas are not the only reason why a business is successful. So go out there, talk to people, bounce your ideas off, share it broadly, write a blog about it, and get feedback. Absolutely. Okay. So from presenting themselves to money, let's talk money now, right? Money? Yep. Um, what are everything? Sure, so there's a lot of money. It's, yeah. it's everybody's money, we're just floating them around, yeah? Um, <laughs> What, what are the other avenues for startups besides looking for VCs like yourself yeah. to look for funding? What other avenues right now are, are available? So uh, the most common initial tranche of funding is, is what we call F, F and F, friends, family, and fools. Right? So you go to your friends, you go to the family, <laughs> you go to the guy like, oh, you know, I don't know, but that sounds good, I'm going to give you money. But typically that's how things start. Right? People who believe in you, feel the passion in you, really think that you're going to crack it. Uh, so friends, families, and fools are usually the first round for a lot of people. Uh, I think uniquely to Singapore in particular is the availability of government funding, grants, spring funding, etc. You can at least get some initial uh, capital to get, get off the ground before you start talking to angel investors or individuals who want to put some money, 10, 50, 100K in each company. And, 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 and then the progressively before you talk to a a VC like us, right. basically what, what happens. Right. I thought there was an interesting development just three days ago, right? Yeah. I saw in the papers, Singapore Exchange, SGX, decided to partner with uh, Clearbridge Accelerator yeah. to look at possible funding of uh, small businesses, small enterprises. I mean, what's the view? Is that going to open up a very different playground for, for young entrepreneurs and, and hopeful businesses? It's, it's definitely promising. I think the crowdfunding platform, Kickstarter, etc., has demonstrated it's possible for interesting projects to get funded. And the internet has provided that ability to, for people from all over the world to see an idea they like and give you, you know, the funds to do it. So this, I think, you, you know, in itself, is a repeated uh, 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 using of that model to, for Singapore in particular. Uh, so I think that definitely is the promise of that. Um, one thing that happens a lot on, on crowdfunding platform is the roles of influencers. Guys who are you know, seen as, if he believes in the project, then I think he's a good judge. I'm going to follow him. Right? So I think that class of investors over time will get built up in Singapore. And then that will really then presage a uh, uh, proliferation of funding by individuals. 
Right. Because right. it's, it's impossible to be expert in everything. A lot of times you rely on an expert to lead the way, and, and that probably should happen right. along right. the way. So. Right. Well, many, many questions there, but I shall not be selfish. I uh, want to open up again the floor to, yeah, Kishan? Yeah. It's a great question, right? Um, it's the, the whole nature of it is you're trading um, a share of the company for capital that can speed up your uh, process of building a business. The alternative is you build a business, make money from it, hopefully that covers the cost and more, and then you plow the profit back to the business, which depending on what you do can be a slow business. So you're trading off the, uh, the time for capital. In situations where you feel the opportunity is now, the window is absolutely tight, uh, it makes sense to do it now and not wait. And maybe trading off that equity for capital, because the time is not on your side, may be the right thing to do. Uh, the next question is how much do you give up, yeah. right? Uh, it is a philosophical question. <laughs> so, um, as an investor, as a venture capital investor in particular, I believe that we should never become the majority shareholder. Why? What's well, going to take a company through from the initial days to the first initial difficult first couple of years is going to be the entrepreneurial energy. I'm not going to bring it. You're going to have to do it. The way to incentivize you to keep you going is to make sure you still have a significant share in the company. I don't want you to become my employee and own just 10% of the company. So, so that model to me is quite important in terms of how, how a com uh, initial funding for a business should be. So specifically, if you go out and raise a Series A for a company that's growing quickly and someone is asking for more than 30%, um, you should think about it. So we have a lot of youngsters nowadays. They want to start their own companies. They want to start their own shops, like straight out of school, out of college. So what would your advice be to parents of those kids? In terms of like, should they start a corporation first? Should they like build up their skills first? Or should they just go straight into it? Um, I think what should drive that decision is how strong you feel about the business idea. Um, um, it's, it's always the wrong thing if you want to start a business because you want to be able to say you say you start a business. That's always the wrong reason to start a business. I think if you feel strong enough that the idea is now, that the timing is now, um, do it. If not, there's no shame working in, say, at Google, which you should try to get into. <laughs> you said you're on OCBC too. OCBC too. <laughs> Sponsors. Uh, do I get a T-shirt? Uh, you get more than a T-shirt. <laughs> so you get a bank account number. You know? <laughs> really? Uh, well, um, I think that's where you pick up skills, you build relationships, like what Mike said. You really get, you know understanding of what you're good at, what you're not good at. I think uh, in, in a structured environment like a corporation, like an OCBC or a Google, it gives you the chance to really get to know about that. So I, I don't think there's any shame if you decide to decide it. Work in a large corporation first and learn really about yourself and, what you're good, and then do a business uh, a few years later when you really feel this is the right time, you feel strongly about it. Any parents here with kids who want to start companies? Not a right demographic. <laughs> Not Frank ready, right? <laughs> Simply as what well. keeps you up at night. I know part of it is the coffee, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what else keeps you up at night? My baby. The, the VC business is a strange business. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I've started companies myself. I've been in startups myself. And when you're doing it, you are 24-7. A VC is a strange business because you're living vicariously throughout the people. What keeps me up at night is you know, it's a strange feeling where you're hoping that the person you're investing in is doing the right thing, and you're trying to keep yourself away from telling him what, exactly what to do. Uh, a lot of times you stay up nice and just thinking through the problems. And when you've invested into five, eight, ten companies, <laughs> you imagine that you are doing that all the time. And that's what keeps me up in there. Uh, 
not in a bad way. It just keeps me thinking and thinking about, you know, what should this guy do in this situation? Uh, what sh how should they take advantage of this, uh, this uh, opportunity, et cetera? Uh, but it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, way of staying awake. Right. Thank you.